Okay. So now we're looking at a pelvis model and we can see here, just a quick bit of revision, that we've got a supraspinous and then interspinous ligaments here. We've got a posterior sacroiliac and then a sacrotuberous ligament. But from this point of view, we can't see much of the sacrospinous. We can just see a little bit of it there. So we've got a greater sciatic foramen here. Uh, but what we're more interested in this week, um, piriformis, I think, is one of the structures on the list. You can see it here, just superior to where the sciatic nerve emerges. Then we can see obturator internus, part of it just here. But on the other side, we can see that a bit better. So here's obturator internus. Here's another part of it here. So those are both parts, oops, sorry, of obturator internus there and there. Now, medial to, to where we can see obturator internus here, actually w this space here would be the ischioanal or ischiorectal fossa. Okay, and that is a structure somewhere uh, on the list for today. Ischioanal or ischiorectal fossa. That's where that would be. But what we can see here are three bits of muscle. So here's the coccyx. This bit of muscle attaching here is coccygeus, sometimes called ischiococcygeus. So if you're reading about ischiococcygeus, that's what they mean. They mean coccygeus. And if the sacrospinous ligament were here, um, it would be covering the, the coccygeus muscle here, okay? <coughs> Then we've got iliococcygeus here. And on this model, they've got quite nice lines <coughs> showing where one muscle ends and the next one starts. Then medial to the iliococcygeus here, we have pubococcygeus. So coccygeus, iliococcygeus, pubococcygeus. All right. Then, and we can see them all on this other side as well, but they're not numbered there. Now then, if I were to draw a line across here that would separate the perineum into an anal triangle and a urogenital triangle. It's better if I move my hand out the way, sorry. So on the bottom part of the screen we've got the urogenital triangle, the triangle and on the top part of the screen we have the anal triangle and so there's a triangle here formed by the sacrotuberous ligament and then the coccyx and then another triangle here formed by the pelvic bones. Now in so we've already had a quick look at what's in the uh, anal triangle, but the other structure that we're interested in here is the external anal sphincter, which we can see the muscle fibres of quite clearly here. And then, in between the anus and the, the vagina here, we've got the perineal body. So that's this structure in here in the midline there. Now attaching into the perineal body, we have on either side the superficial transverse perineal muscle. So that one here and one here. And then running along the um, ischiopubic ramus, we have the ischiocavernosus muscle. It's only little. Now then there's a membrane, the perineal membrane, that covers the deep transverse perineal muscle. So this is perineal membrane here and here, and it's covering the uh, deep transverse perineal muscle, which will be under it there. Then Wrapping around the opening of the vestibule of the vagina here, we have the bulbospongiosis muscle. So this one here, bulbospongiosis. And then I think, oh hang on, what we'll do now is have a look at the internal point of view. And again, what we can see here, kind of cool, they've, they've shown the muscles fairly well. And again, there's, there's dividing lines between them. So here, attaching to the pubis, is the pubococcygeus muscle. Now, if, if we could see some fibres of this muscle that were wrapping around the, the rectum here, then, and then coming back up to the pubis on the other side, we would call that bit puborectalis. But... On this model and on any, any of the specimens I've seen, you can't clearly differentiate those fibres. Okay, so I'm not expecting you to identify puborectalis. I'm just telling you that if we could clearly see some fibres wrapping around the rectum here, coming back to the other side, that would be puborectalis, and they would be the most medial fibres of pubococcygeus. Okay, can't clearly see them here, so we're just calling the whole thing pubococcygeus. Then we have iliococcygeus here. And then posterior to that, 
sorry. Then we have coxages, or sometimes called ischiocoxages. So there's that bit there. So you can see those three there. Now what's kind of interesting though is that iliocoxageus here doesn't actually attach to the ilium. So here's the ilium up here. There's another muscle attaching there. Which muscle is that? A bit tricky to tell. That one's actually obturator internus. So the obturator internus comes up to atta attach to the boundaries there of the obturator foramen. This little white structure here is the tendinous arch of levator ani. And I'm pretty sure that's a structure on your list for today. So the tendinous arch of levator ani is here and the pubo iliocoxygeus and coxygeus muscles are attaching into that. They don't actually attach to the ilium there. Okay, and then I think that will do us for that.